We'll start now to talk about the treatment of acute myeloid leukemia or AML. Uh, we talked about treating your symptoms initially. Um, we also would usually put some type of central catheter in so you could get blood transfusions, get antibiotics, have your blood drawn from there because you'll be in the hospital usually between four and six weeks uh, receiving some treatment so access so you don't have to be stuck a lot uh, is very useful to patients. Uh, we will have you on some antibiotics to help prevent infections and we'll use, frequently do it uh, some measure of your heart function because one of the medicines we use can affect heart function. We want to make sure it's healthy to start with. So I try to break treatment down into four segments and I'll try to, I, I say the same thing to our medical students, our residents, so uh, I'll try to talk at a level I think all of us can understand. The first one is what I call the wipeout phase. Your job here is to wipe out the leukemia uh, and that's commonly involves two drugs. One drug runs continuously for seven days and the other drugs given as over a short period of time the first three days. So we call it so-called seven plus three. It's really, they overlap the first three days, so it's really seven days of treatment. The main drug that runs for seven days is the, called cytarabine or ARC, and then one of the anthracyclines is used for the other three days, and it can vary. There are several different ones you can use. I won't go into great details about the drugs. Not a pharmacology course, I just want you to understand that component. The one that's given for three days is the one that can affect the heart function. Just like if you were spraying a weed, and I tell people sometimes having leukemia is like having a garden that's overgrown by weeds, and we gotta wipe out all the weeds and let the good healthy seed cells grow back. And there's a lot of analogies as you go through this discussion uh, with that. So once you spray a weed with weed killer, it doesn't die right before your eyes. So we give that seven days of treatment, and we let it affect the bone marrow cells, let them try to reproduce and die. And then a week after we finish, or so around day 14, we do another bone marrow test to see if the disease is gone. If we don't see with the eye any, under the microscope, any leukemia left, then we've accomplished that first goal, the wipeout phase. And about 60% of people will have wipeout after the first course of treatment. So after seven and three, wait seven days, day 14, get your results day 15, and they'll be wiped out. And then you go to the recovery mode, and we'll go to that, that's step two. If that, the 40% of people that have some residual disease, but have had progress, then get five plus two. So five days of the one drug, two drugs, two days of the other drug, wait a week and have another bone marrow test. And of those people, about 40%, three-fourths or 30% of patients will be wiped out and they then move on to the recovery phase as well. Of the 10% that still have disease, then you have to individualize treatment at that point because that means their, disease, their leukemia is fairly resistant and that really has to be individualized and frequently may involve some clinical trials or some novel approaches. Once you get past that first course, the wipeout phase, let's move to cycle two, which is, and, and to be quite blunt, is to help keep the patient alive. The biggest risk to people with leukemia is infection. Of all, most patients survive their leukemia, but of patients who die from their leukemia, 85% of the time it's infection, and 10% of the time it's bleeding. 5% is everything else put together. So when you're in our, in our, on our service, you would think we're infectious disease doctors most of the time because we spend a lot of time talking about infection. Everybody washes their hands to make sure they're clean. We have a slight dietary restrictions and we have special air handling in your room to help to decrease your risk of infection. We'll want you to wear a mask if you're out in the hall to decrease infection. And we'll want sick family and friends to stay home and call you on the phone. But that being said, we frequently can deal with those. We know almost everyone will have a fever sometime during the hospitalization and they will need antibiotics. We deal with that on a regular basis and we can get through that most of the time. But those are our big challenges. So during that two weeks between when that bone marrow is empty and we've accomplished goal one, and when your blood counts start to recover, you start to repopulate your blood with good infection fighting cells, during that two or three weeks, plus the time when we're waiting for your bone marrow to be emptied out, we're really focusing on those side effects. Number one being infection, number two bleeding, and then all the other things, adjusting all the other things around. We deal with nausea, vomiting, we do pretty well with that these days probably around two and a half to three weeks from the start of treatment, you will lose your hair, and we'll, almost everybody does lose their hair with this treatment, but unlike mine, yours is going to grow back, uh, so, so relax and it'll be beautiful when it comes back. The key thing is to have you get through this and have your good blood cells grow back and your hair will come with time. Um, the other side effects are largely related to medications, things related to antibiotics, sometimes people can have rashes and other things that come along, but we've dealt with the major ones you deal with. So during that time period, we're helping you while you have no good healthy blood cells. We're giving you blood cell transfusions, frequently need red cells 
once or twice a week. You will need platelet transfusions two or three times a week to help keep you from bleeding. Uh, and, and that's the, really the focus of that period of time. The next major goal is to have you recover normal cells. Patients say when you tell them their bone marrow is empty after that day 14 bone marrow or that day 28 bone marrow, am I in remission? No. But when your blood cells start to come up and your white count gets up and you have good healthy white cells and your plates come up and you have good healthy uh, platelets, and then we will do another bone marrow test to show that the bone marrow is clear, you don't have any leukemia in there, and that's when you say you're in remission. Your blood's up, your bone marrow's clear, then you're in remission. That blood count recovery usually starts about two weeks from your last chemotherapy. So if you got seven and three, well, I'm sorry, about three weeks from your last chemotherapy, about two weeks from that bone marrow that was empty. So if you got seven and three, you had 21 days to that, so that's around four weeks. And that's when I said earlier on, you were in the hospital about four weeks. If you then get a second course, that pushes things back about two weeks, and you're in the hospital for about six weeks waiting for your blood counts to recover. When your blood counts recover, we're able to stop your antibiotics, send you home, let you recover some at home. Now you would think that's it. You graduated, right? You went into remission. But if we don't do anything after that, most patients' leukemia will come back. So the fourth major step is to then come back for some booster treatments. It's hard to think that you get through this hospitalization four to six weeks, you go home, and you're going to be home for a couple of weeks and then come back for a booster treatment. But the good news is that for those booster treatments, you're in the hospital for about five days. You then go home. We work with you and your doctor, and, and you receive uh, blood transfusion support once or twice a week. You usually see the doctor twice a week, get blood counts checked, get transfusions if you need them. If you have a fever, you come back in the hospital, but we have you on some antibiotics by mouth, by mouth to try to prevent that. And usually that hospitalization is very short. Um, patients will recover about three weeks from the start of that treatment. We give them another two or three weeks off before their next cycle, and people usually receive anywhere from two to four cycles of the booster treatment over a period of four to six months. One of the things that many of our patients ask us about are, are bone marrow transplants. First of all, bone marrow transplants frequently these are blood transplants. We use the blood instead of the bone marrow. So BMT is still fit, so it's blood and marrow transplant. But many patients with AML don't need bone marrow transplants from the beginning. Those are reserved largely for people that have the risk factors that are associated with a high risk of the leukemia coming back over time or for patients who don't go into remission initially, or for anyone whose leukemia comes back over time. Once you're in remission, we'll be following you very closely. The highest risk of leukemia coming back is over the first two to three years. Patients who are in remission and disease-free at three years, there's a very, very good chance, greater than 90% chance that their leukemia won't come back. So the high risk is in those first few years, and we'll be monitoring your blood counts closely during that time. You'll obviously let us know if you have any problems, uh, the problems will be the same ones that bring you in. Infection, bleeding, or weakness and fatigue from anemia. The good news about acute leukemia is patients who do go in remission can frequently return to totally normal function. They can have very normal lives. Uh, they do not have a lot of long-term side effects uh, in most cases. So if people are in remission, remain in remission, they very much can get back to a normal life.